Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. Welcome to another Star Wars Shatterpoint video. Happy Tuesday. Uh, we had the latest um, transmission came out yesterday. Uh, myself and Mr. Quinn Duggan have been going through it. Uh, so we're going to break down everything uh, that is included in the article, plus what we think it means for the game. So, Mr. Quinn Duggan, how the hell are you doing, sir? Oh, More? yeah. Whoa. More Star Wars is more better. Yeah. I we mean, know now, this. now we have to wait a whole day till we get more more Star Wars yes. with all the shows. Yes. Oh, I mean, God. It's just all the Star Wars all the time at the moment. You get yeah, Bad Batch. De definitely feels like a Star Wars year, right? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Um, so last week, Quinn, um, we got all around... I mean, they, they called it gameplay... Maybe I, I would I would call it framework as opposed yeah, to uh, like, as opposed to gameplay. Um, but obviously, nothing we saw in there um, worried either of us, and I think it's fair to say enthused us more for the game. Um, this time, we've got a deep dive, um, or a a deeper dive, should I say, on the stat card overview um so let's jump over to the article and let's see what they say so star wars shatterpoint stat card overview welcome back to the latest transmission in our multi-article series looking at the gameplay and core mechanics of amg's newest miniatures game star wars shatterpoint in this transmission we're going to be diving into how the iconic characters of a galaxy far, far away are brought to life in a game through their stat cards. Um, so some stuff in here, you know, every miniature has a stat card. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. What, what's interesting, though, is that they use the word every miniature. Which, which but is we, not what it's going to be. We it's know that every, every miniature, yeah, every miniature doesn't have a stat card. Every unit has a stat card. So... Get it right. <laughs> Get it right, AMG. Um, so, uh, basically, they're going to include basic things like a name, a tag, type, points cost. Uh, and then more importantly for gameplay, a unit stat card includes a list of a unit's special abilities and the stats used to determine how much damage it can suffer before being wounded or defeated. Um, so if we take a look here at General Anakin Skywalker, so we've got there his name, obviously General Anakin Skywalker, tags, so the tags are going to be important uh, primarily for abilities, so synergy between um, uh, the different types of abilities that you've got, and we'll go into them uh, in a little in a little while. Uh, but then the big one here, Quinn, and it's kind of what we, once we knew that every single character got two actions, it's kind of what we thought. So you've got stamina and durability. So how does that work? Well, um, Anakin Skywalker will have 11 points of stamina, meaning that he is going to need to take uh, 11 damage to be wounded. So 11 down to zero or zero up to 11, depending on how they count it. Because AMG do it, you start at zero, don't you, and add it on. But whichever way around it is, 11 yeah. points of damage, and he'll be wounded. Um, but he can be wounded three times before he becomes defeated. And the reason why it's three, Quinn, is that durability of three. And so, even then, when he has taken those three wounds, still gets one activation. He still he gets, gets that one, one last activation. ditch effort. Yeah, I, which I do like that. I do like that. Um, so... You know, a a health pool really of a minimum of thirty three, okay. And again, we we don't yet know, right? If 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 people are dishing out twenty five damage in attack, thirty three is not I mean, a lot. We, um, <laughs> we, we yeah, we definitely know they're not. Um, but a minimum health pool of thirty three, because obviously in built every single character has the ability to heal themselves. Uh, so we know that off the bat, and we think there's going to be some other things in there as well. But let's take a little deeper dive then, Quinn, because we get we get to see... In fact, let's come back to his card, because let's go and take a look at what all of these different ability um, 
uh, sort of icons mean then? Yeah. So I mean, th- this is where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins. Absolutely. So abilities in Shatterpoint are divided into several types. The type of ability determines when it can be used. Here's a list and description of each ability type in Shatterpoint. Uh, and it's important to remember as well, Quinn, isn't it, that um, whenever it uh, has action at the beginning of, of the ability, um, just like it does in MCP, just like it does in Legion, that's going to be one of your actions, one of your two actions for your turn. Um, so first of all, active, that little downward arrow, don't know why it's a downward arrow, but there we go. Um, active abilities can be used at any time during a unit activation. And as you can see there, it says, if their text begins with action, the unit must spend an action to use their ability. Active abilities always have a force cost. So if we scroll back up there a second, we can see the two examples here are, uh, oh, sorry, the one example here, sorry, is force jump. Uh, which uh, each character in this unit may jump. Now, we know that jump uh, is going to be a short move. We don't quite know yet what that allows you to do. I imagine bounding over terrain. There will be a degree of verticality involved. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, So that's going to cost you one force point. Um, Reactive abilities, so unsurprisingly, (laughs) can only be used in response to a specific triggering event. Reactive abilities state when they can be used in their rules text and always have a force cost. Each player may only use one reactive ability in response to a single triggering event. So Very interesting and very different from MCP. And very specific as well, right? Um, so interesting. Um, so, but he does say, he says each player as well. So even if you've got multiple units on your board who can react to it you can only pick one to be able to do it and that one character can only do one thing um now there's going to be some timing around this quinn what is a single triggering event right i would imagine it will be and i'm going to use some mcp wording here but after the attack has resolved before the attack takes place, I imagine they're going to be the single triggering yeah, event. You'll so... have multiple things that call out when the triggering event is, and you'll have multiple yeah. things that have that as the event that they, you know, trigger on. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it might be that you can use multiple reactive abilities during a single attack. Um, yeah, or attack, attack turn, turn, whatever it is. Uh, but it'll be at those different points. You know, I imagine that you're going to have an, you know, an event would be a targeting, you know, before dice are rolled, but after targeting, you know, after yeah. dice are rolled, all the different, you know, those what fourteen points that we get in, um, in uh, in MCP that show you the timing chart. Pretty much each one of those points, you would class as a single triggering event. At least from that perspective, they may do something different, but I, I imagine that's what it will be. Um, so this is not a London. Uh, this is not a London Underground uh, tube sign, Quinn. This is actually the innate. What you mean? Ability. This is the innate station. This is not the innate station. No. Well, that was part of the Jubilee um, line. Yeah, exactly. Um, so innate abilities are always in effect and never have a force cost. Uh, in addition to normal innate abilities, some units have special identity uh, abilities known as tactic and identity innate abilities. So they've got two slightly different symbols there. Uh, so we'll, I think we've got some examples of, of, of what that looks do, like. Yeah. Um, so tactic. So tactic abilities are special innate abilities that allow units to work together. The effects of tactic abilities are resolved at the start of a unit activation. And so we that have seen some, this with Rex, we have seen. Right? We've seen it on Rex, and I think we've got another example yep, got down below as well. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, Quinn, is identity abilities. So they're special innate abilities, unique to primary units. Each identity ability explains how it's triggered and used. Note that while identities are often resolved in response to a triggering event, they are innate abilities and do not preclude a player from using a single reactive ability in response to the same event. Who word it. So they're using the word innate not in the same way 
as I suppose they have done in MCP. Really, well, it kind of is. It's just zero cost, right? That's that's what it is. It's always there, and it doesn't cost anything. Well, no, it's something that's like always on, right? Always on. It, it's, yeah. it's like fly in MCP and things like that. But then there are a couple of different subsections where you get things like your tactics that you do at the very start, or like your identities, which are like unique to a character, right? Uh, yeah. Speaking of identities, Anakin has one. We should probably. Talk Anakin about. does. Yeah, we'll go and have a quick look. So. Let's go through the rest of his card then. So we can see that Anakin has got the one uh, action. Sorry, the yeah, the one active. Let's get these terminology right. So the That's one active ability. Um, let's have a quick look at those reactive ones as well, Quinn. So yeah. I'm going to end this, uh, which is going to cost I, I two. I do love this. Yeah, two, it's two ve- force. It's very Vader. It's very Vader. Yeah. After this unit makes a combat action, it may use this ability. One character in this unit may make an attack targeting one of the same enemy characters within range and line of sight. Um, it's a double tap, right? Basically, you know, you, you do it once, you don't take them down, you get to do it again, um, which it, is pretty it, cool. It's, it's that moment in every Clone Wars episode where Anakin goes a little bit like, you know little bit dodgy, and you get, like, that very faint Imperial March in the background as he's standing over the defeated enemy ready to kill them. And then Obi-Wan's like, oh, no, what are you doing? Stop. And then he does Now, I want to just pick up on something that I've noticed already, Quim. Reactive I, I abilities exactly what you're about to always about. have a force cost. Yeah. Deflect. No force cost. No, no, no. The force cost is zero. There's, there's a distinct difference. Because okay. if somebody doesn't have a force cost, the force cost can't increase by one when they become wounded. Ah, interesting point and very well made, Quinn. Yes. Yeah. Up. This is why you get the big bucks, isn't it? <laughs> this is why I'm getting a free um, door set. <laughs> deflect. So another, you know, very, 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 very Jedi. I imagine this is going to be a, a, um, a keyword and an ability that you see on, on a every, lot like, of cards. Either, right? yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I really hope they keep some commonality with keywords, not just on the tags, as they're calling them, but I don't want 12 different names for Deflect. Well, right? you, like, you, you don't want Sorosu Mastery. But you know what I mean, right? I'm, yeah. I'm fine I mean, like, if they I, do I something else. I see like, Kenobi having a different version where he does three damage back instead. Yeah, no... And I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. Absolutely ability, fine right? with that. You, you don't yeah. want the exact same text of the ability, but it's called Jarkai or something <laughs> done, and it still does the two damage for the shot, like the crack symbol. Yeah. So after a, so we know this is also a ranged attack, Quinn. So after a ranged yep. attack, target a character in this unit is resolved. This unit may use this ability if the attack roll contained one or more X results. It's X like a. X go and give it to you. Yeah, uh, we're, it's we're calling this going down it. So we're, we're calling this the crack or the shatter result. Yeah, um, crack or shatter. Pro- let's go with the shatter symbol. Shatter because, symbol. You know, yeah. We'll um, the attacking unit suffers two wounds. So we now also know that these little, uh, I don't know what you would call them. Explosions, I think. Very Explosions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they've like, they've. Um, it's quite yeah, interesting that it's not actually a defensive buff for the Jedi, but rather an offensive thing of you're taking damage for hitting me. Yeah. Right, I think that's yeah. interesting. Can, can I, I read I the think, next one? Can I, read I the think the defense one? yeah, you can do I think the defensive part is gonna be more around as we'll get to some of the, the standard. The number cards of dice that they're rolling compared to yeah. other people. Forget that. Yeah, that's right. Too soon. Oh, well, stop, stop, yeah. stop. Stop. Sorry. I just started pressing. I plus I went to go do my earbud and it started playing something. Let me just get rid of that. Right. Let's do this again. Cool. Uh, so deflect queen. So after a ranged attack, so we know that's a ranged attack. Uh, yep. Target a character in this unit is resolved. This unit may use this ability if the attack roll contained one or more kind of like. X is like a crack or a sh- yeah, shatter down them. Let's so let's call it a shatter symbol. It's shatter like a sh- yeah, a shatter symbol. I mean, it is shatter point. Um, the attacking unit suffers two. I mean, we know they're damaged. They look like 
explosions, little right? explosions maybe yeah yeah, yeah. um so yeah so it's not you know what it, it's it, interesting it's an offensive deterrent rather than a defensive boost right yeah I yeah because way to approach being able to deflect blast fire right Especially when we don't know the sort of health pools that some of these other units are going to have. Yeah, like we've not seen like the stats for a, a support unit, right? Well, like, yeah. I could imagine two shots into Je- into Anakin on a B one, and he w- and he takes them out. Oh yeah, like that like, could easily be a thing, <laughs> right? Um, which, by the way, from a thematic standpoint, I am absolutely fine with. Oh, uh, Quinn, do you want to read out the last one? <laughs> so this is what you were talking about isn't it sorry just to clarify this is his identity yeah. so these are only available to primary units uh, and these are yeah uh, and these are really going to be kind of like one of the defining traits aren't yeah. they I view this a little bit like a leadership a leadership yeah ex- exactly that right yeah exactly that no this is where the fun begins. <laughs> when a character in this unit wounds an enemy primary unit or secondary unit, so that's, you know, doing enough stamina damage to them that they get a wound token. That's not killing them outright. Yeah. Uh, so, after the effect is resolved, move the struggle token one space towards your momentum tokens. So, basically, shift that. Just shift that a little bit more towards you. Yeah. And then... If the wounded unit is a primary unit, so you're always getting the first part from secondaries and primaries. If it's a primary, though, each allied Galactic Republic character may, what we assume to be, recover. Recover one, yeah. yeah. I think that's what it's going to be, isn't it? I'm fairly um, certain that's what it's going to be. And I think this is really where we're going to see the the, 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 the different play styles, right? Yeah. Of of different characters, your because, offensive, like, you know, your control. In, in the core set, right, you have Anakin and Ahsoka with Rex and the Mandalorians, right? That's like your sort of preset strike team. Yes. You're actually, like, inclined to get rid of the Mandalorians and play with more Galactic Republic characters under Anakin because you're healing more, right? Absolutely. Because, as it stands, you're going from healing five in the core set strike team to healing a potential of eight if you just swap out Ahsoka and bo or like Obi-Wan, right? So let me first of all ask you a really important question because okay. there's one question that we haven't had answered yet that will very much determine whether or not you're, the, the, the route you're going down is indeed the right thought or train of thought. I don't believe, and Quinn, jump in at any point if I'm wrong, I'm sure you will, um, we actually don't yet know what allied means. And what I mean by that is... Does do, do it refer ass- to squad or strike team, right? Y- yeah, the assumption is you are alloy, allied to your... Str- at the very least, your squad, but are you also allied to your wider strike team? Now, I'm going to take a punt here, Quinn, and say I think you are... And I think that's where the extra benefits that you say yeah. are going to come I, in. I, I, but I would very much be inclined to say that you are allied to everyone in your strike team. Yeah, but I'm just—I just wanted to point it out that we don't actually yet yeah. know if that is the case. So I think it is an important, you know, an important part to yeah. uh, to raise. But go on, sorry, Quinn, you were going to say. I mean, you know, instead of you know taking. Ahsoka with bo and the Clan Cries Mandalorians. We're calling them Night Owls because that's what they are. They are they are the Night Owls. They're, they're yeah. night owls. Um, and we're going to see her again this week, I reckon. We, we are, definitely. <laughs> oh. um, so instead of taking them, maybe sub out for, you know, Obi-Wan, Cody in the 212th, and then you get, like, you know, in effect, assuming Ahsoka is Galactic Republic, which she may not be, you're going from healing... Four to five, depending on Ahsoka's tags, to healing eight, just heal your entire strike team. I I am going to say right now, Go on. Padawan Ahsoka is will be Galactic Republic. Jed, uh, older Ahsoka is not. 
Because she isn't. Mm. She's left the order. Like, she just isn't. Um, I think I think she's going to have another tag um, that will allow her to at least share something with the the, the, the Mandalorians. She's yeah. obviously not going to have the Mandalorian tag. What, what, what's um, the thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, she, she needs the civilian tag. Civilian tag, yeah. Because <laughs> um, we need mates you, to be able to just go, get out of here, civilian. Civilian, yeah. Um, so that's my thought, is that I don't think... And I think we're going to see that because I think what you're going to see is um, I actually think that there may be less synergy with the what I'm calling the secondary strike teams in here. Because... Um, secondary strike teams. Yeah, sorry, uh, secondary squads. So I'm seeing Anakin and Maul as being like the two where all the synergy is. I don't know if there's going to be as much synergy between Ahsoka and the Night Owls and... Um, Asajj and the B right. ones. So you're thinking that Maul and Anakin are the primaries that gel best with their preset squad, right? I th- I think they could be. I yeah. don't think that's fair. Like I I can see Ventress because she's more of an assassin type. Maybe just you know straying away from that, not being as involved. Well, I also think she's not Sith apprentice Asajj Ventress. Well, no, she's um assassin, right? Yeah. So. I think, and, and I think you mentioned this last week, when we there is a very, very good chance that Ahsoka Tano comes in a at the same time. We in, get in, in like a wave with yeah, yeah, yeah. effectively a bad guy secondary Ventress. from the pro, from the core box. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be like, you know, it's going to be. Oh, I, I keep wanting to say the word operative, but that's legion. That is legion. It just would yeah. have been nice if they didn't have the same star. So letter. many. But so many S's. Thing, <laughs> just, uh. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. But anyway, that's my again. This is th- th- this bit is all conjecture, guys. Yeah. But I I do think that that is because Ahsoka for me is not Galactic Republic. At least the version of Ahsoka that we are getting in the core box. Yeah, I can I can totally see that. Bonus Ahsoka is, but that's yeah. a different thing. Um. So yeah, interesting Quinn, and obviously the one thing, guys, that you will notice on here, um, is that. The only damage that he can do on this card is a d- deflect. Um, yeah. So well, how are people going to do damage? Shall we also quickly talk about Bo-Katan? Well, let's go down and have a quick look at Bo-Katan because we have had another little uh, tease. They keep doing this, don't they? Where they blur the cards out. Um, by the way, I obviously double figures. I think a ten, uh, and I think a two. Uh, I could for see her. That being like an eleven. I also do agree on two though. Oh, 100% of two. Yeah, she doesn't get that. She does She does not get up three times. No. Like, um, so she has, um, uh, what was the name of this queen? Let's make sure we get it right. This Pride is the of tac- the Mandalore. No, no, the tactic. Oh, yeah, it's so this tactic. is the, it's the this is the tactic. So this is the one that if you want to do it, you have to do it at the start of this Unix activation. Um, and it says, choose another allied Mandalorian character the chosen character may jump. Um, very, very thematic, right? Because yeah. that's, you know, they've got the jetpacks, they get to move around. Um, uh, we, we also have it confirmed that this is the same ability Gar Saxon has. Yes, they did say, didn't they? So Because they, they say up here, let's just double check. Uh, take, for instance, the tactic ability Pride of the Mandalore, found on both Gar Saxon and Bo Katan Cries. And I like it that they're calling it, I, I'm assuming. This is they're both going to be called Pride of the Mandalore because they do the same thing. Okay? Things that do the same thing, call them the same name, and people don't have to worry about innate, inured, amanana, shinamanamana, troll, whatever else it is. Troll. <laughs> He's got one called Troll something, hasn't he? R- um, troll. No, no, no. I'm on about the reduced damage one. Like oh, it's about troll 42. Hide. 42 different Blade of Immortality, Invincible yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so yes, so this is a an example there. Uh, and as you say, Quinn, we did see this on Rex's card. However, Rex's was slightly different yeah, yeah. in that Rex could uh, do it to himself. He whereas could do it himself or any Galactic Republic character, which is probably going to be a more plentiful tag than Mandalorian. Well, interesting though, um, we can have Bo Katan talk about 
um, you know, uh, the ability to mix and match, Bo Katan cries could be a second to Maul, and then brings along her Night right. Owls. Or as maybe well. she comes um, along with the Mandalorian commandos, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So there's some some really nice synergy there. I think yeah. that's gonna be one of the that's gonna be one of the really nice things. I think most of us are going to start out playing this game. First few games we play, right? We're gonna just take, right? Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin together and whatever else. I mean, else. that's and what then, I'm doing. Yeah. And then after a few games, oops, after a few games, you start mix and matching and theory crafting. And then, oh, well, what about if I, you yeah. know, this I mean, here, all of a sudden lets this happen. And I'm very tempted by just Dooku Maul, all that aggression. Yeah. Like just, just absolutely murder people. I mean, um, you also, know me. You know what I do I'm love really hoping for uh, pack-wise? Because we, we always like to just like speculate on packs a little bit in these videos. We do like to speculate on packs, yes. Uh, I, I want a pre Vizsla and the Death Watch pack. That would be good. Because yeah, then that would be very, very good. perfectly slots in as Vizsla's secondary. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And again, we already know that they are not shying away from doing multiple versions of the same character. Yeah. Um, and, and, and this one really does feel more like a true snapshot in time. Right, where okay, this is Padawan Ahsoka, she is a secondary, she is Galactic Republic. This is grown up Ahsoka, you know. Oh, I, I can't remember the, the, the tag that her card had, but like, you know, no no longer a Jedi or whatever it is. Jedi um, no more. Jedi Ooh. no more. There we go. There we go. Okay, um, but that's not it, Quinn, is it? Because um so it talks about, you know, tactics and what it can do and everything like that um how individuals in star wars approach combat is as important to their character as their personality or background so as soon as i started reading this quinn i'm like they've 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 got it right they've got it right <laughs> um and blah, blah 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 in shatterpoint each unit fights with its very own unique style offering players a wide range of options and tactical choices when resolving combat and that's what i wanted to hear quinn was this is not i have attack one that is range three and does x and i roll dice and you roll dice and i add mine up and take away yours and you take that much damage um because yeah, that I mean, for me is it not very much seems that this is going down a similar route to what I predicted in yep. terms of global playbooks. Absolutely. So Shatterpoint combat resolution mechanics are so key to the game that they will be the focus of a whole upcoming article. Yes! <laughs> uh, with a deep dive, blah, 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 blah. Suffice to say that in addition to a unit stat card, each unit also has an additional card called a stance card. Uh, and we knew this from the boxes. Uh, and then, Quinn, you very, very rightly... Uh, outlined or, or you know let's say you, you you didn't quite hit the bullseye you got it in the 25 you know Look, around the I, outside I, I am one with the force the force <laughs> with me um so um dynamic action of star wars jewel and blaster fights to the tabletop like never before suffice to say here that in addition to a unit stack card we've done that bit uh, stance cars list all of the unit attacks defenses and combat tree much more on that later unfortunately not not in this one. Later is in like next week. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't um, matter because we're just gonna pure conjecture and speculation. The shit out absolutely. of Absolutely. Yep. Some unit stance cards, typically primary units, are double sided and can be flipped back and forth between different fighting styles. This adds another element of tactical choice and personalization to the main characters of each squad. And we've got. I mean, we we can see one in full. So we've got. Yep. Dark Rage of uh, Lord Maul. Lord Maul, yeah. As, as as he is called on here. And let, let's break down a few of these different elements here, Quinn. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to zoom in ever so slightly so we get a, a, a much better view just of this card. And then we'll go oh, back I'm gonna to the other one. I'm going to have to do the thing go. again. One second. So, Quinn, uh, quick one. Um, you translated the Arabesh for us there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, um, uh, it's really interesting Easter egg. Yeah, go on. Um, it says, 
uh, Din and Grogu are coming before uh, you get Mace Windu. No, it says, it says combat tree. Combat tree. Yeah, that's all it says. Um, so, yeah, no Easter eggs. Boo. 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 Um, but this is Quinn going to be... And the reason we've picked this card out is it's front and centre. Yeah. Uh, so we get to see more of the stats. Um, <clears throat> but there's... This is going to be one side of Darth Maul's, or Lord Maul, as it is. Um, and you would assume that Dark Rage is like, he is just going all out and murdering as much as what is, you know, yeah. as much as he can. Um, you know what I would but, have been really interested to see? Go on. I know, I know the model doesn't have it, and it doesn't seem like there's an option for it. But I would have liked to have seen, like, a Dark Saber Maul option. Well, maybe... Maybe flip side. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So, um, there's a couple of different components. So, first of all, there's the name. So, as we know, this one's Dark Rage. Uh, we've then got two values, or two different sides here. Uh, we've got a ranged combat, and we have got a uh, uh, melee combat, let's call it. Now, ranged combat, Quim, there's a little line under there and a line underneath. I think that um, the line on the symbol will represent the range of that particular character. So, or that particular unit, should I, should I say, because it's it's strange that they've got that there. So I think somewhere between a two and a five, you know, you're going to have sniper teams that can do five. You're going to have, I imagine most blaster fire is going to be range three or four. Ish, like oh, feels like I reckon. feels like that's about right. Yeah. Um, so, and then you can see, obviously, you know, melee. We're not going to get that. Um, and then underneath there, we've then got the two different types of dice. Um, first of all, we've got the great attack dice, and obviously, Maul has no range weapons, so therefore he gets no uh, no range attack die. But he does get five defense die. They're the blue ones, and then on his attacks. He's going to get seven, um, seven attack die for his his melee and five for his defense. Yeah. Um, so that's the first part. So we know how many die he's or dice he's he's rolling. Um, we've then got this combat tree, yeah. which is very very interesting. So on each of them, there's a start point which we think is going to be. The, the highlighted orange, right? That that feels like it's it's the right place to be. Um, what what are your thoughts, Quinn, in terms of how you do these? Are these extra things we're going to be able to do? Um, what what's your thought on how you're going to navigate through these this, this sort of various combat tree? Combat tree is the right name, right? Because that's what yeah. they've called it in Orobesh. Um, what's your thoughts on it? So, um, let me talk you through how I think, effectively, combat is going to work as a whole, right? And then that will eventually lead into that. So, you decide you're going to stab someone with a lightsaber. This is just what you've decided to do, Rich. Obviously. You, you assemble your dice pool for lightsaber stabbing, which, for Maul, is seven dice. Yeah. You there, then, the person he is unfortunately stabbing... Assembles their defense pool, which, as we've seen here, like let's let's take you know let's say it's a mirror match just because it's the easiest way to do this. So it's more yeah, on so they get five. five. Yeah. Yeah. So he's rolling five. So uh, attacking Maul rolls his seven dice, gets however many successes. Defending Maul rolls his five dice, gets however many successes. Now I believe this is going to be altered by the two things that we've got down at the bottom. We've got double-bladed lightsaber and Juyo. And I think those are going to be attack and defense, respectively. So, yes, yeah, because they are symbols that represent Yeah, that. They're, they're, they're symbols. I think, basically, um, for the double-bladed lightsaber, so on attack, it's going to be however many successes you get corresponds to what you get in that table. Okay. So, one to two successes, you get, like, the what we're calling, like, a crit icon... And, and an extra damage. Three, you get crit icon, hit icon, and an extra damage. Four, double crit, double damage, right? So, let's say I rolled three successes with Maul on attack. That means that I access the third thing on the table, which means I'm getting a an additional crit result 
and an additional hit result, and I'm doing a de like just a free damage to the opponent. So I've rolled my three, but then I've got two additional from having rolled three, right? Okay. Then we take what Defending Maul has rolled. And let's say he has gotten... Uh, he's gotten, like, you know, maybe two Thermal Detonator Symbols and one of these diamonds, right? Now, the diamond is shown in the top left corner of that table. That, to me, says that is the result that is required. With the double-bladed lightsaber one, it's got, effectively, the melee combat symbol. I think that just means you have to be attacking in melee, right? Okay. So, he's rolled two Thermal Detonators and one diamond, which means... He's got another Thermal Detonator, which we're assuming are successes defensively. They're not going to be called Thermal Detonators. That's just sort of what they look like. So, that's three from Maul defending. And in total, five from Maul attacking, right? Because okay. he's got his base three, and then he's been boosted two because of double-bladed lightsaber. From there, like, we don't know what crits are going to do, right? So that was going be... to be that was going to be my question there because yeah. obviously some of these are symbols that are on dice on dice some of them are not yes. um some of them we can identify right damage symbol which is looks like the explosion yep. um a a, 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 re, a a a heel symbal which yeah, you know, we've seen there symbol, we've got um, symbol, and then a and jump symbol the, the dice symbols right so there are a number of things that what we're calling crits could do. It could be that they negate an opposing success. So for every crit you have, you negate an, oppo like an opponent's successful die. Or it could be they simply can't be blocked. Right? Okay. Whatever it is, let's say after the dust has settled, Maul has gotten three successes through. Right? So let's, let, let's assume... That the crits do actually pierce. One of those successes from defending Maul has gone away. You've gotten three through. Right? So defending Maul is currently taking a damage plus whatever these three garner, right? So you start at your orange one. And I believe that takes up one of your three successes. Then from there, you can go two lengths of a tree, right? So you can you're guaranteed to be doing two damage with the next one, because those are the two results that lead on from that initial one. And then from there, depending on which side of the tree you went down, or branch of the tree, you're either getting what we think is a bleed symbol and a damage, or what is potentially a push and a damage, right? It may also be a move of your own, right? So are you looking at the one in the middle? The one in the middle, yeah. That's 100% a move of your own. Uh, yeah, so all in all, you're doing one damage from your double-bladed lightsaber, and then you're getting another five damage from your combat tree, guaranteed. So you're doing six damage, and you're either getting to move yourself or giving them a bleed, what we think is a bleed. And I think that's how the combat trees are going to work and interact. It's going to be the, your total successes, so just what you've rolled, is what interacts with, like, you know, your weapon, your double-bladed lightsaber, your twin lightsaber, your whatever. And then that gives you extra results in addition. And then the combat tree is going to be your successes minus the opponent's defenses, right? And that's going to be how many, Interesting. like, sort of branches of the tree you get to travel along. So, so, do, you, so do you think you're going to reset... So, so once you move along the tree, do you stay there, or do you think you always start at the orange? Or I think you always start at the orange, and if effectively the orange is the starting point you always begin at with, uh, like when you attack someone, right? And from okay. there, based on the number of to like, what would it be like net successes, like what you've gained, o like overall with all your negatives and bonuses and all this. What you've got at the end of all of that stuff, that is the number of times you can move along the tree, right? But you're getting every result along the way. Okay. And that okay. has to be how it works, because otherwise, some of it is dumb. <laughs> because so, if you look at Maul, you can go, uh, you know, 
three along the path down the middle, and you get a move and two damage, right? Yeah. Uh, the the same result is two away from the other path that's beneath it, right? So you're going two further to get the same result, if that's the case. So I think you get everything you hit along the way. Yeah, interesting is going to be the the the, the movement because it it you know how three moves feels like a lot if you yeah. roll four, but I don't know how hard. You know, we don't yet know what a success is, do we? Um, well, I think it's going to mean that you need to roll five for a start. I uh, know, yeah, you need to roll five because I think you're always taking one up. By just getting on the combat tree. Oh, if you, so you if think you you're need at least blank, one. If you completely like flub the roll and blank out, you're not getting a guaranteed two damage, right? So you, you actually need totally six results. So you need six results to get to the end of his tree. To get so to if the you end go of the tree. one, I mean, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Potentially, you can actually go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It, potentially, if you want to do everything more can possibly do, minus two damage. It's ten successes. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he's only got seven die, and we don't believe there's going to be an exploding element in this game. So it is physically possible because if you use um, the focus or whatever they called it in the last article to get an extra die, you get eight. If you get all eight successes plus the two from your double blade lightsaber being four or more, that is ten. So if you get that and your opponent gets nothing, you can go all the way around, but that is the only way I can see it happen. See, I I think it's I, I think it's going to be a little bit different. Um okay. at, le- at, le- at least, you know, that that's 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 my take on it. And I wanna just bring up I wanna just bring up the dice really quick, Quinn. So let yeah. me just grab these a second. Okay, so these are these are the dice, okay, and we've identified, haven't we, by looking through them on the attack dice, uh, that we've got four um, four different symbols. Um, one that we're calling a crit, which Quinn you can't see, but you you know what it is because we spoke yeah. about it being like a crit. Um, we've then got a hit, which is obviously a hit. Um, We've then got a, a little sort of point symbol, like a, a diamond shape. Um, and then we've got the what we're calling the shatter symbol. Now, we already know and we already think shatter is bad. So I think, you know, we both know that, that, yep, if you get one of those shatter symbols, um, that's when your opponent gets to do or potentially gets to do things to you as well. Yeah, like the only time we've ever seen it has been in a negative context with the flat, right? Yeah, I think, and this is just me, I think what we're going to see is, I think these little little pointy arrow symbols could be the progression along the track. So that's what triggers moving along. You're thinking the actual... like the, the, the kite symbols is what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I, so I think the kite symbols allow you to move along and get to do a certain thing. I don't know if you get to do them all. So I don't think it's a cumulative thing. So are you thinking that based on the number of like kite symbols you roll is the number of like br- branches you can travel along and then based on the number of like successes and crits together that you get through then that forms the the, the wound pull. Yeah. Nah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I thought. I think the good thing is, is that um, for me, th- there's an element to this that is more than <laughs> I roll a dice, you roll a dice, yeah. add minus detract, and there we go, sort of thing. Yeah. Give me one this second. This is exactly to... the kind of thing I was hoping for in terms of getting like a playbook style mechanic. Um, I wasn't like expecting there to be, you know the whole double-bladed lightsaber duo type things where they have additional things that they get on attack and defense. Yeah, it's very, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Also, yeah. these are double-sided, right? Yes. So, yeah. so we can we, we can imagine that yeah, one of them is going to be... Mall, right? Yeah. We can imagine one of them is going to be more defensive than the other one for mm-hmm. certain characters. Um, you know, you, you brought a very good point up, Quinn, beforehand. If we move over to... Um, 
uh, Asajas here. Hers is called Form 2 Makashi. You can see there, Quinn, you pointed this out, the twin lightsabers. Yep. I think um, when she flips, it will be her putting her two lightsabers together like she does in the Clone Wars, and she'll have a double-bladed lightsaber on that side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can see the other names. Then we've got uh, Jakai, or Jakai, uh, for uh, Ahsoka, and then Form 5 Shien for uh, for Anakin. And Anakin's looks like, you know, this one in particular, a symbol there, Quinn, that we really don't know what it is yet. That yeah, like, like this I sort of called it a cross, thing, right? a crosshairs like type symbol. Yeah, yeah compass I, I, thing. Co compass is where I went uh, with it. But yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, there's a more interesting symbol on Ahsoka's card, I think. Oh, yes. If we take a quick look at Ahsoka's here. So just this symbol here. Like the second um, branch along. Disarm. Break, Disarm, you yeah. know, is pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty very cool, interesting to say the least. Yeah, um, yeah, so there we are, Quinn. I mean, again, a lot of information. I really yeah. like these, I really like these cards. Um, I, I, I just want to know, I want to know what each symbol is now because actually, just looking again at us, looking again at Asajas, that's an action symbol. Yeah, yeah, she triggers an active ability if she gets to that so, bit of the tree. And this is why I'm, this is why I'm thinking like, are they cumulative or is it like too? I, I, too... I am of the belief that you get everything along the path. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we'll we'll see. I guess is we, the major thing, we, right? We we will see. We will see. All we know is we've got some cards. We've got some symbols. Um, but but Quinn. The big, big point for me in all of this is that they have taken combat seriously. Yeah. And that, for me, is the big plus point with, with all of this, because that was like, my, I'm as, looking, as you know, that was my big concern. Yeah. Well, I'm looking very forward to this as someone who used to play Guild Ball, having another sort of playbook-style mechanic. It's very, very interesting to me. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, lots of lots of exciting stuff to come. Um, Adepticon is getting closer and closer and yeah, closer. I, We're now in the month of March. I um, think that we'll get the article next week where they go more into depth with this. It's going to be combat next week, yeah. And 100%. then the article after that, which is the final one before Adepticon is a thing, Rulebook. I think we might get two. Do we get two no, more? We, we get one. We get one more. So we get two. Okay. We get combat tree and then the one after. And then one I after. Th I think yeah. the one after is just going to be rulebook. Very interesting if that's what they do. That will be a much bigger video to break down. Yeah. Um, obviously, what we'll do once we have familiarized ourselves with the rules, um, we will put, be putting some. Um, some 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 sort of training videos together. Yeah, because um, we play shatter point. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. because you know we do know that uh, some people just prefer to consume dairy. I know I do, Quinn. Like the first thing I do when I go to you know play a new game is very rarely read the rule book. It's reading the rule book alongside having somebody who's played the game <laughs> telling me uh, yeah telling I mean, me how to do if it. If I was going to pick someone to teach me a game, it wouldn't be either of us, Chuckle Folk. <clears throat> Look, we're. 60% of the time we're right every time, so, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's you dragging my average deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, remember we are giving away a copy of Star Wars Shatterpoint, the core box. Um, so on the either the 4th or 5th of May, uh, it'll either be, you know, Star Wars Day or May the May the, oh, May the 6th. Um, is it, May, uh, May the 5th? May the 6th? It's Return of the 5th. May the 6th? <laughs> no, shut up. I know. Return of the fifth. Um, so we'll be giving away uh, a car box. Uh, how can you get a hold of that car box? Well, you need to do three things. You need to leave a like on this video, leave a comment on this, and also go back and watch the other videos as well, uh, because we'll pick a video at random. Plus, we'll also pick a comment at random from that video. Uh, we're doing it in May, so you've got plenty of time to cancel any pre-orders that you've got, or you know, 
gift it to to somebody else uh, or maybe you haven't pre-ordered it yet and you know you're holding on um and also make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well um we do have our patreon up and running where you can support us from as little as a pound a month and lastly we've got our discord there's almost 800 people on there now um it's had a little bit of a revamp there is now a dedicated uh shatter point um uh sort of well, multiple channels that are in there as well. So uh, as we get closer and closer to the game, uh, we're going to be having, uh, I'm sure, a lot more dialogue in there. Um, and we've also got some rules. You know, we've got some of the forum guys um, on... Um, Excuse me on the uh, on the server as well. Uh, who answer all the questions on MCP? Um, so yeah, go go over there and check it out. It's completely free to join. Um, Queen, anything else to say to the people at home? Um, it just wait till next week where I'm right about everything. Uh some things guys we're gonna leave it there <laughs> um as always it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time may the force be with you 